Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Eileen, and I'm one of the Thomas Crane librarians. I'm here to talk today with Carrie, one of my coworkers. We're going to be discussing um, Overdrive and Libby, two of our e resources. Uh, welcome, Carrie. Thank you very much for having me, Eileen. I'm very happy to be here and discuss Libby with you today. So um, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about exactly what Libby is and how it differentiates between Overdrive. So Libby is an Overdrive product. Mm -hmm. um, it is their mobile version, their mobile software. So you would use Overdrive when you're on a computer and preferably Libby when you're using a e-reader or tablet or your phone of some kind. Um, so Libby is set up to work specifically on mobile devices. Okay, yep. Yeah. And I've heard it's very user-friendly. I know it's very clean looking. Um, and what sort of things can you get on, on Libby? So it runs the gamut. So there's obviously eBooks um, and audiobooks. There are some videos on there as well um, and some graphic novels as well. Okay. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the parameters of borrowing and uh, how many items people get, that sort of thing? Sure. So Libby, you are restricted by checkouts per month. And right now the parameter is you can check out up to 10 items at a time mm -hmm. um, each month. So as long as you have 10 items or less, you're good to go. Um, it'll prohibit you from continuing to check out once you've reached that 10 item limit. And you can change your due date to either seven or 14 days on Libby. And if you are finished reading, let's say you've checked it out for 14 days, you've finished reading it in a week, you always have the option of returning it early on your own or just waiting for the item to expire. Yeah, it's always nice to return it early, get somebody else, you know, the ability to read it. Because there are a lot of popular items on, on Libby, um, things that have just been released by popular uh, authors. Is that right? Yes, and so we are adding to our collection every day. Our acquisitions librarian is always looking for new recommendations and new titles to add, and she's always taking feedback from and from staff on things to add to our collection. Um, the one uh, difference between Libby and some of our streaming services is that our items are particularly, they're single use, what we call single use um, items, which means only one person can check them out at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is why you'll oftentimes see longer wait times for items on Overdrive and Libby, whereas you don't necessarily see that at all on our streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you'll have to put a hold instead of actually just borrowing immediately. But, yes. Um, and the holds can be pretty long. They can be, you know, weeks long. Yeah. But it's pretty worth it because it's, it's pretty uh, a nice little uh, service there that you can get very popular items in all kinds of genres, um, right to your phone, right to your computer. So that's pretty neat. Um, and so yeah, and the, the other good thing is that um, when an item is on Overdrive, you're not gonna see it on our streaming platforms. And if something's on our streaming platforms, it's not always gonna be on Overdrive. So it is a really good supplement especially with everybody being stuck at home um, to kind of give you more options of items that you have access to. And it has the largest ebook catalog mm -hmm. that we have, so. Yeah, so definitely, you know, you have Hoopla on one hand that you can get immediately, and then we have this here with a lot more popular titles that you can also borrow from. So, um, I don't know, uh, do you want to talk about what kind of things we want to recommend to people today? And Yes, Eileen, what are you reading on Overdrive right now? Well, um, I recently finished The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. It's kind of a tongue twister. Um, it's uh, by Stuart Turton. He's an English author. Um, and it's been called um, part Groundhog Day, part Agatha Christie. Um, so it's a mystery. And it has amazing, like, after I finished this, my mind was blown. Just, it is such, I can't give anything away, obviously, because it's a mystery. But there's so many twists, and he wrote it to uh, like different perspectives and it's just I can't really say much more but if you are a mystery lover and it's kind of like a you know an older mystery feel 
um, and you like some twists that you have never seen. I have never seen before myself. I highly, highly, highly recommend this. It's um, it's in audio form and ebook form in Libby. Um, I kind of switched out when I was on a trip recently before all this. Um, and it was, it was super, super, super entertaining. So highly recommended. So Carrie, what can you tell us about what you can recommend? Uh, so right now I'm actually going back and rereading probably one of my all time favorite young adult books, but it's a young adult narrative nonfiction. Um, and it's by an author by the name of Steve Schenken and it's called Bomb, The Race to uh, Build the Atomic Bomb. And it, focuses on the espionage race specifically between the US, Germany, Great Britain, and Russia um, during World War II to be the first country to build the atomic bomb. Um, and the great thing that I love about it is Steve Schenken started as a textbook writer. And he thought that, that it was just a terrible way to get kids to learn. Oh, yeah. And so he turned to narrative nonfiction. And um, I think everybody obviously knows who, which country won the espionage race, but he does such a great job of still building suspense um, in this historical narrative nonfiction uh, mm -hmm. that you can't put it down. Um, the first time I read it, I was in a hurricane and I had no power and I, I needed to know how the book ended. So I finished reading it by candlelight. Um, wow. It's really, really good. So I highly recommend it. Hell it yeah. deserves a reread. <laughs> So um, I also wanted to mention one, another one. Um, it's There There by Tommy Orange. Uh, now this was a, a huge hit a couple years ago. Um, it talks about um, Native Americans, urban Native Americans. Like we often hear, you know, historical stories about Native Americans who live in, you know, Oklahoma or like from 200 years ago. But this is a story of um, a group of Native Americans in Oakland and how their lives intersect um, culminating in a powwow and um it is very very moving um be prepared to maybe cry a little uh but the way he kind of interweaves everyone's lives together um creating this kind of um, story is very very compelling um so i can recommend it um it's um also i think just an e um audiobook um on libby so oh, definitely nice. check that out so and I you love have, a good audio. I know, me too. I love an audio book. So um, what's your next pick? So the next pick that I have uh, stories a little bit from the other one, but it's still in young adult genre. And it is um, We Are Liars by E. Lockhart. And this is a story about a young girl, um, Caden Sinclair. And her family is rather wealthy. Um, it's kind of set in like a fictional coastal Massachusetts town, kind of very Cape feel to it. And um, this is at the start of Cadence's, she calls it her 17th summer. Um, and she has a group of friends that she grew up with on the island. They would summer there all together and they were known as the liars. Um, and uh, all we know about Cadence is that two years ago on her 15th summer, she had a pretty severe head injury and she has lost a lot of her memory from that summer, and she hasn't uh, kept up with the liars um, in the last year, so this is the first time she's getting to see them since her accident, um, and she goes back to the uh, island where they summer to kind of figure out what happened those two years ago, um, what the accident was, what caused it, and how uh, she ended up where she was, mm -hmm. and the great thing that I really like about this story is that Cadence is what we like to call an unreliable narrator. Um, because of her memory loss, we don't really know what is uh, true memories and what are things that she is just uh, making up. So it's a not quite a mystery, but it's definitely very sus suspense heavy. Um, and it's a really quick read. And I love how e, um, Lockhart does a great job in writing strong female leads for young girls, so. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Well, yeah, so that, so as you guys can see that there are a lot of good picks on um, Libby and you're welcome to contact us at the Thomas Crane Library at thomascranelibrary.org. Um, you can also chat with us live. Uh, we, librarians are, can chat with you live 
uh, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 12, and then five to seven also Monday through Thursday, and then Fridays, 10 to 12 and two to four. We can chat with you and we can send you links on how to access Libyan Overdrive and get you the reads you like. So thanks for joining us, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. Okay.